So, due to the reduced allocations from the federal account, the Federation account, state governments have been accused of abandoning the responsibility of funding their universities. A punch investigation has showed that many state governments had reduced subventions to their universities, while others had stopped funding the institutions following the economic downturn in the country. This has led to adverse effects such as the struggle to pay salaries and the neglecting of research. Why establish institutions we cannot take care of? And how do we improve our education sector if this is still happening in 2019? Still with me in the studio, Lulu Elegbe. Thank you very much. And Mayo Ido, thank you very much for staying with us. What does this mean? Subvention. The states are cutting even further. The universities are screaming, we don't have enough. They are in a tug of war with the federal government over, you know, maintenance and salaries. And now we have this. What does this mean, really? Let's start from there. Okay, so the state government, a number of the universities in Nigeria, well, not all the universities in Nigeria are private, like we know. So some of them are federal owned, some of them are state owned. And so they have to be funded by whoever owns them, um, including the private ones. So that those are funded by the owners. Now, because, like we mentioned earlier, the, the country is broke, the government is broke, state government, um, federal government, that's having a ripple effect on funding for these universities and other public institutions. But I think some of these things, for me, is not just the Yes, the, the money has been cut and those sorts of things, but for me it's an opportunity to take a step back and make, some, make certain hard decisions. For example, Lagos State has Unilag. I think it's a um, federal university. There's Unilag, there's Yabatec, there's Lasso. Um, and then you have a number of private universities as well. The same, it's almost the same, that's replicated almost across, across most of the states in the country. For, as far as I'm concerned, right, my, my, my view of this is that the government should concentrate on, even if you have just one university, personally, I think one university, one federally, or maybe one federal university, uh, geogra uh, what's it called, geopolitical geogra zone, zone. Should, be, should be enough. No, a lot of people would argue with that, but my, the reason I say that is because university education anywhere in the world is not cheap. That's the reality. It's expensive. It, it's not just Nigeria. It's, it's, it's expensive anywhere. So when you start having um, a state that has five, six, ten universities, how exactly are you going to maintain them? It doesn't make any sense. This, it's not, these, these things are not cheap by any, by any standard. You're gonna pay professors, you're gonna infrastructure, research, all these kinds of things. So why not just close down many of these universities, focus on a few, and channel the resources that, you, that you'd have spent on so many, channel them into making, bringing those ones up to global standards. So if we have one university, for example, in Southwest Nigeria, and the resources of the southwestern states and the federal government is channeled to that one university. Can you imagine what that would look like in terms of the kind of standard? Like well, 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 the, well, I understand why, the political is, realities aside, around that. Aside the political realities, mm -hmm. let, let's look at the population yeah. you know, in the country. That mm -hmm. poses a challenge in itself because even the institutions that That's, we have... Sorry, I know where you're going, mm -hmm. but... That's the second part of the issue. Not to see, and it's not a popular thing to say, but the reality is that not every university is not for everybody. That's let's be honest, it's not. But in Nigeria, yeah, we like to do the my son has to be a doctor, my daughter has to be a lawyer kind of thing. That's when 2019, the world has moved beyond that. This idea that you have this, you almost have this thing set out for you. You go from primary school to secondary school to jam to university and then into the work. Force. The world doesn't work that way anymore. We, we need to catch up with the rest of the world in, in terms of how we do certain things. You can, you can be a successful person without going to university. It's not all about having a degree. We need to move past that in Nigeria. Let's bring Mayowa into this conversation. First off, do you subscribe to a reduction in the number of institutions per state? Um, 
Yes, I do actually, because I think with these things, again, it's back to what we were saying about the government being broke and there being cuts that need to be made. These are hard decisions. And I think a lot of these universities are really acts of folly in that, you know, states, I don't see why certain states should have, you know, more than three or two higher um, education institutions. Because I think what you end up doing is you have it, all these schools that you cannot maintain. So it's very quantity based, no quality. And I think um, education is something we really need to work on tweaking. And I think that will be like the first step towards... So how would we address the political and population issues, which I was trying to, but I wanted him to learn. How, in your opinion, are we going to address that? Okay, what I would propose. Um, let's say a certain state cannot really afford to maintain that a university or um, higher college institution. Why don't you, you know what, do like a public-private partnership. Let someone come, be responsible for maintaining and operating this institution. You can pay the government a license fee or whatever, where it's, or you pay them a set fee. But I think what we have to do now is improve the quality. Yeah. There, and that, again, that, there again, that, that there is a problem because we have quite a number of private institutions in this country that is thriving even in the face of the challenges that our state institutions are having. You still have them applying for licenses almost on a daily basis. People want more institutions in this country. So yep. is that maybe part of the problem? Absolutely. That is a major part of the problem. Because with this story, there was I think it was in the Daily Telegraph, one of the other papers, where someone, um, I can't remember who he was, he, he was making a point about making setting up universities more attractive. Because he said some of the NUCs, um, some of the NUCs requirements, things like you need to have, is it 300 hectares of land? You yeah. need to have 200 million naira, um, 5 million naira registration fee, all those sorts of things. He, he was saying that he thinks it's too much. They should reduce it so that more private people can um, can set up universities. But I think I actually think the opposite should be the case. I think it should be less attractive to set up universities because. Somebody, somebody sets up a university today, everything is going well, and then for some reason, for whatever reason, the, the person has financial issues tomorrow, it's going to affect that university, and we've seen it happen. Yes, I so was a victim. It, it, and this, and that's, that's exactly my point. We've seen these things happen. So this idea that you can, anybody, um, anyone can approach NUC as long as you meet certain requirements, you can say, why do we need so many, for God's sake? Why do we need so many universities? The ones that are there are not being maintained properly. Whether it's, I mean, yes, the private ones are, are probably better maintained than the state ones, which is, which is to be expected because the, the private sector versus public sector thing. But the reality is that it, whether it's public, whether it's private, the reality is that we have too many universities and that wouldn't be a problem if they were being maintained. The, the reality is they are not. You have lecturers not being paid or being underpaid compared to what the what the standard for what a professor, for example, should be earning. You have all these. You have the strikes going on every almost every two years. Students um, spend eight years on four-year courses because ASU is on strike, then NASU is on strike. So we have all these recurrent issues and. These things won't stop. These things are not going to end because the reality is that the government doesn't have the money to keep maintaining these universities. So, which is why I'm saying that, you know, why not just have one or two in a particular, um, what's it called, um, geopolitical. geopolitical zone so that you know that everything you need in terms of resources is concentrating on making those the best that they can be then anyone trying to get into those universities, you have to be able to, to meet certain requirements. It's not a case of my uncle is the VC, so he can make a call. It, we need to stop all those things. Because as long as we have these sorts of universities that are underfunded and so the quality is very, very bad or the quality is not as good as it should be, what kind of graduates do you think are going to come out from those universities? It, so, these things are going to affect everything else. So uh, as you were talking, I was, I was thinking about the governors. Mm. They, 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 they keep <coughs> going to cut education uh, subvention for the universities and tertiary institutions and the likes. 
some people are saying that if there is a will, there will be a way. That this government could do it, but it is because of a lack of emphasis, I mean, appreciation of the importance of education. That is why this situation is. Do you agree? Um, yes and no, in that I think education is very important, but I think I, it's going to, it might sound controversial, but I think more primary education should be the priority. So if you're cutting, is for me, it's easier to cut at the tertiary level because I think... Um, but the primary level is not even getting the needed I, I, attention. I, 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 so I, I, where I, I are the monies for education? Well... <laughs> I know I'm, this question is posing at you, but no, we, no, need to, get, we need to I, think I, I about agree, these I agree issues. With the, I, see, I agree with the premise of your questions, right? But the thing is, it's not... I think he said yes and no. So for me, it's actually just no. Because I don't think the issue is the government's fo or lack of focus on education or lack of emphasis on education. I don't think that's what the issue is. Because remember that this has been a recurrent issue over the last God knows how many administrations. So it's not, it's not something that is unique to. The, so these universities didn't go into a state of non maintenance under the Buhari administration. It's something that's been happening. It's, I think that decline started a long time ago and it's only gotten worse over time. Now, they have, um, I think, the TET fund and all this counterpart funding to do all these things and all that. But I think it's, we don't think about sustainability in Nigeria. So let's say the UN or somebody gives $1 billion tomorrow to um, fund infrastructure projects in universities. A lot of people get excited. They, maybe they repaint the buildings, they do certain things. But then after the first, second, third year, what happens? You're not going to get that one billion every year. You're going to get it over a period of time. So what's going to happen to the infrastructure after that? How do you maintain the infrastructure after that? How do you keep paying your lecturers a good wage after that? So that sustainability is what a lot of, is what I don't think a lot of thought goes into. It. It's just about setting it up. Once it's set up, they do the ribbon cutting, it looks good, but what happens after that? It's, and that's, what, and that's why I feel like there are too, the problem is that there are too many of them. And no, there's no state, even like, I mean, even, I think I was reading in the story, Akwai Bomb, which um, from my understanding, I think has the highest federal allocation. Mm -hmm. Even Akwai Bomb State University is struggling. It's, it's, it's a problem. It, it, it is, it, it doesn't... So with all this multiplicity of challenges mm. from, we have the issue of curriculum, we have ASU and ASU yeah. um, issues with the federal government, now we have state government saying they don't have money to fund institutions. What hope is there for education in this country? <laughs> um, I don't think it's a case of losing all hope. I just think it's a case of re-strategizing. So rethinking, understanding that, okay, the, pro the, the model as it is right now does not work. Yeah. The idea, the, the goal should be, okay, how can we make it work? So again, it could be, um, I think also in terms of even the accreditation process, there should also be, I think there should also be higher standards in terms of if a university is not meeting certain standards, downgrade it. Let it become a technical college. Let, them, let it be something, let them go and specialize. And, um, because then I think you need, you invest, it's, so now, sorry. Um, Basically, what I'm trying to ask again is, do we have a leadership challenge? Do we have, um, people who will be willing to go the extra mile because what we are talking about as much as some persons might not see it as very crucial it is like the backbone of the survival of this nation if we don't get it right with education then i don't know where we are no i think i agree with Maya because the the issue is really it's clear that whatever we're doing with education in nigeria is not working that much is clear so then the question becomes okay what would work for Nigeria and how do we make that happen? We need, so, that, that's the question I'm asking. Do we have the people that will be willing to do go, Well, to be work? fair, see, to be fair, we have people, maybe not, um, maybe not at the level of, say, a minister of education, for example, 
But I know for a fact that we have people that are asking those questions and actually trying to change things. I mean, we had some of them on Plus TV um, a few weeks ago. They, um, I think they started this um, thing it's called Teach for Nigeria or Teach yes. Nigeria or yeah. something. And I think they're doing an amazing job because they're starting to change the narrative in terms of how teachers um, are, are approach, how teachers um, are viewed, how they, how they um, deliver the curriculum to schools, those sorts of things. It's those, as long as, as long as we have people like that, that are making even the smallest of changes, the idea is to try and see if that can then be replicated across the board. Now, do we have, um, do we have the will in government to do that? It would take, for that to happen, the government would have to see education as important as any other, as whatever the biggest line item in the budget is. Right now, I don't think they see it as enough of a priority. Yeah, they, everybody says education is important, but you can't say that on the one hand, and then you look at what has been allocated for education, and it, it just doesn't add up in terms of what you're saying and what you're allocating for it. I must say thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank, thank you for coming. Much. And thank you for staying with us. We're not done. We'll go on a short break for our plus report. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Just stay with us. The Nigerian police has paraded about 81 suspected criminals arrested for various criminal activities. The first public relations officer, Frank Mba, while addressing newsmen in Abuja, said the suspects were arrested for several crimes, which include kidnapping, murder, local weapons manufacturing, internet fraud, among others. Mba said notable among the suspects were members of a notorious gang which was created in the Katina Correctional Facility and have been responsible for several high-profile kidnappings in the Northwest. He urged Nigerians to be security conscious and work with the police, especially in the area of intelligence sharing. We have today a total of 81 suspects Most of the suspects here are suspects that have been indicted in our investigations and prima facie cases of murder, kidnapping, unlawful possession of weapons, and internet fraud clearly established against them. We also have yet another very dangerous gang led by one Rufai. This particular gang was formed in Castina prisons. The members of this gang were all persons who have been prosecuted by the police and some of them were seven jail t sentences, and we are the, we're almost rounding off their, their sentences, while others were actually in the prison awaiting trials. Somehow they were able to get themselves together while in the prison, formed a very deadly gang, and while in the prison, they hatched the plot to kidnap one Alhaji Tukuru Subairu, a wealthy businessman in, in Sokoto State. As soon as they were out of the prisons, they embarked on that mission, kidnapped the businessman, and collected ransoms running into several millions from him. Again, we went after them, and as I speak to you today, all the gang members have been arrested. It goes without saying, as acknowledged by our guests tonight, that much more needs to be done to salvage what is left of our educational institutions. And because I have no ready solutions aside what was suggested tonight, I will ask questions instead. Will a reduction in the number of institutions be a consideration for our governments? Will the people allow for cutting measures if proven it will enhance the quality of our institutions? Are we ready for change?
We need to find answers and fast. The future of Nigeria depends on it. Thank you for sharing your time with us tonight. We hope it was worthwhile. Do keep watching Plus TV Africa and remember to share your thoughts on our programs. Find us on any of our preferred social media platforms at Plus TV Africa. Until I see you again, please be well.